Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the horror Mizumani G. And like I, I think I tweeted this probably sometime last week uh, that I was going to do a tribute to uh, Julian Sands. Now, Julian Sands, he is a uh, famous actor. He's a British actor who starred in a whole bunch of movies. Unfortunately, uh, he had disappeared earlier this year. And I believe sometime on the 24th of June, his re human remains were found by other hikers, and they were officially identified as Julian Sands. So, unfortunately, he passed away uh, after hiking up somewhere in Southern California, Northern California. Now, Julian Sands starred in a whole bunch of movies. Uh, he got his breakout role in A Room to a View. He also starred in The Killing Fields, Arachnophobia, Boxing Elena, Leaving Las Vegas, The Medallion, Ocean's 13, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and on television, he actually was Vladimir Burko in the season of 24. He played Jorel in Smallville, and he actually voiced Valmont in the Jackie Chan Adventures. Now, I know if people know this, he actually starred in two episodes of the Law & Order series. He appeared in Law & Order SVU, and the original Law & Order, I mean, not the original, the uh, actual Law & Order CI. And the, uh, those, both those roles he was great, in, especially the CI episode. But I think most horror fans love Julian Sands for the two movies he starred in Warlock and Warlock Armageddon. So basically what I'm going to do is talking about those two movies beginning in the 1989 film called Warlock. Now, Warlock was a 1989 American supernatural film. It was directed by Steve Miner, of all people. It was written by Dave Tufi. I believe he's the guy that gave us uh, Pitch Black. Now, he plays the titular character, also along with Laurie Singer, I believe pre-Tank uh, Girl, and Richard E. Grant. Now, the premise of this movie is very simple. A warlock free flees from 17th century to 20th century with a witch hunter hot in hot pursuit of him. Now, one of the things I actually thought it was interesting because this was still pre-slasher time, even though it was in the mid, uh, at the 80s ending, and uh, looks like slasher films were still going strong at that particular time. So it's very interesting they came up with this concept. Now, it's another interesting concept because when you're dealing with witchcraft, most of the time it's always portrayed by women. It's the first time that I've seen where they actually have a witch and it's a male character. And Julian Sands did a fantastic job in playing this particular character. Now, the film begins where Richard E. Gant Itchy E. Grant's character, Giles Renfield, has captured the warlock. He just knows the warlock really doesn't have a name. Somehow a spell create a spell is released while he's locked up now in the 17th century it transports the warlock and Renfield into modern day Los Angeles I believe back in the late 80s the warlock eventually communicates with a demon and he's there to pick up the grim the grim grimoire as sort of a witch's bible which has the way to undo creation by announcing God's name. And that's what he's tasked to do. It's been split up into many pieces. So he goes around the country trying to put this book back together, say God's name and undo creation. And uh, Richard Grant and Laurie E. Laurie e. Singer's, Laurie Singer's character are up to stop him before he undoes creation. Now, like I said, I like this particular film. Rich, uh, Julian Sand is great as a title character. I like Richard E. Grant. They have a great combination. Laurie Singer is actually pretty good, too, in this particular film, too. Some of the practical effects are a little bit dated, uh, as you can see, but it still doesn't take away how much of a great film this was. We have a nice final battle between uh, Renfield and the Warlock. When we come to the end of the chapter, I thought it was concluded very nicely. It was a nice film. If you haven't seen Warlock, please take it out, and you know, really going to have a great time watching Julian Sands does what he does best. Now, the second film was, was released in 1993. It's called Warlock Armageddon. Now, this is simply a standalone film, even though it's basically the same character, but it's a standalone film. Uh, this came out in 1993. This was directed by Anthony Hickok, and it was uh, written by Kevin Rock. Now, Julian Stans once again returns as the Warlock. We have Chris Young, Paula Marshall, jo Joanna Pocala, and Stephen Kahn, and R.J. Armstrong. They all star in this particular film. Now, in this film, an order, uh, an order of druids train their children to battle the evil Warlock was determined to unleash Satan upon the world by bringing together a collection of five mystic rune stones together. Now, this one... It deals more in Celtic mythology. Uh, the Druids, they were the ones at the beginning of the film. They stop these five rune stones to unleash Satan, and they push back, and they separate the stones and push them out throughout, uh, throughout the world. 
the warlock is kind of reborn or resurrected in a uh, kind of a crazy way. And he's there to reunite, to find the root stones, find out where they are, put them back together so that way he can unleash Satan in the world. Now, in this particular film, we have Druid Warriors. We have Kenny Travis and Samantha Ellison. They are, they are in love, but they're also Druid Warriors. Now, while Samantha's father has neglected his responsibility of making sure that she becomes a Druid Warrior, Kenny's father does what is necessary because they know that the Warlock is going to come and find those root stones, and they need to have them ready to battle the warlock. Now, while Kenny is in the purpose of training and he's having some troubles focusing, we see the warlock going around the country, gathering up all the root stones. And eventually, he'll eventually come to that town where Kenny and Samantha are, and they have a nice battle. Now, I think in this particular film, I think Julian Sands really ups the stakes in here because I think the warlock in this one, he's a little bit more vicious. He's a little more deadly. He takes no prisoners while he's searching for the rune stones right there. So I thought he actually did a pretty good job in this particular film. Like I said, you know, it's nice seeing Julian, uh, Julian Sands once again do a role that he uh, was famous for. I really love his performances. Everyone does a pretty good job. And again, if you have not seen Warlock Armageddon, take a look at it. Yeah, there was a third Warlock film, but it did not star as Julian Sand. I believe it's Bruce Pine, the guy that was the bad guy in uh, Passenger 57. I believe he starts in the film. Again, it's another standalone horror, uh, uh, standalone sequel. It just has the name Warlock. I forget what it, what it was called. But uh, Julian Sands didn't start it, so I never watched it. But I always will tell people, you want to see Julian Sands at his best, watch Warlock and Warlock Armageddon. And if you actually want to see Julian Sands be a good guy, watch Arachnophobia. Yeah, I thought he actually did a good job in those characters right there. If you want to see him play something else, I suggest you actually take a look at the Law & Order CI episode that he was on as well. I thought he was a good uh good character in that as well. He was a great actor. It's such a uh, sad loss for, uh, for him. And uh, I wish his family and uh, wish his family is, you know, want to give the family my condolences here. Yes, he's going to be uh, highly missed. So there you have it, guys. That's my tribute to Julian Sands. If you did like this video, please like and share because it does help out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put a new video such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G. And always remember that horror rules. Ha <laughs> ha. I see you in my next video. Y'all guys stay safe out there. Rest in peace, Julian. You'll be missed.